Well, good morning, uh, everyone. Um, and thank you very much for joining this hearing. Um, this is the meeting of the uh, Licensing Subcommittee C, and if everyone could keep their microphones muted until it's your turn to speak. If you wish to speak at another point, please uh, use the raise hand facility. Uh, so my name is Councillor David Gardner, I'm chair of this uh, subcommittee, and also on the subcommittee is Councillor Claire Burt MacDonald. Um, we uh, were hoping to have Councillor Linda Bird, but she has been uh, waylaid with another appointment, um, but we thought we'd uh, proceed anyway. Uh, we have a quorum of two, so we are quorate and uh, able to conduct the business. Uh, we also have a legal advisor who is uh, Kamaljit Jandu and uh, the clerk to the meeting, uh, Matthew Atto. Um, so I've just passed through the items on the agenda, the formal items, if I can. Um, so I've received, well, I, apologies for lateness from Linda, but the rules are that, uh, from Councillor Bird, the rules are that she cannot participate now as she joins because she wasn't at the beginning. Uh, I, assume, I mean, it will be all right if she joins before we start the substantive item. Um, Item two, I have not been notified of any urgent business. I would say that the second um, case we were due to hear today, the second application about the premises license for GB10 Sports Limited in Eltham, that has been uh, postponed due to the uh, other request of the applicant who couldn't make it today. So that will be heard another time. So we're only hearing uh, the application um, on uh, Cutty's Heart and Gardens this morning. Um, and uh, just ask if if any member has any interest to declare. No, no. Uh, so I hear none. Um, the minutes of the previous meeting have been circulated uh, with the papers. Um, are we happy that they're a correct record? I mean, it's the 14th of May. I think only I was there and I'm happy that they're a great record. I reviewed them at the time. Uh, so um, we can agree those um, and I will sign them. So we now move to the substantive item, uh, which is um, the grant of premises license for Cutty Sark Gardens. And I just want to check that people are present. Um, can I just check the applicant's uh, legal representative is here, Rashid Galain? I can see you, Rashid. Good morning, yep. everybody. Yes. And you're, you're the only person representing the applicant this morning. Uh, I am with my um, uh, colleague, uh, uh, Oliver. Uh, he's with me at the moment. And um, the head of property of Greenwich Hospital, uh, James Charlton. Right. Thank you. Um, and uh, making representations on the applications, just to go through uh, if people could identify themselves. We've been notified of um, Oliver Roxas Green. Is Oliver here? No, don't see Oliver. Okay, he may join us later. Um, Councillor uh, uh, Bern Mulligan, I can see him. Um, okay, um, Anna Ginsberg, is Anna here? Yeah, thank you, Anna. Um, Councillor Magella Anding, I can see. Good morning. Uh, Kim Jackson, is Kim here? No, not at the moment. Right. Um, uh, Brian and Anna Walker. I'm here, Brian Walker. Brian Walker, lovely. And Milagros Brady. That's you, is it? Lovely. Thank you, Milagros. Okay. Are there any other um, people that made written representations that wanted to address the hearing this morning? Chair, there's a gentleman called James on the screen. If he could have just identify himself, that'd be good. Okay. 
James. Sorry, good morning. I was introduced by Rashid. I'm James Charlton, head of um, property at Greenwich Hospital. All oh, right, so you're with the applicant. Yeah. I am with the applicant, correct, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. I've also actually seen on the screen now, because she was over the page, uh, Kim Jackson. So Kim is with us, but maybe not listening in at the moment. I don't know. Um, so I can tick Kim off. Lovely. Um, and there's someone called LM. LM. Yeah, resident. And you're just listening in, are you? Yes, please. Yeah, okay, thank you very much, Ellen. Right. <laughs> could, could, could the lady identify her name as Ellen? If she's not making representations, she's not meant to be uh, on the link. What? what, I, understood, what I understood that I could attend the meeting even if I did not want to make a representation yeah. as I am a resident and did make an objection. Yeah, I think that's right, actually, Camelgit. The meetings are normally, when, when they're held in person, they're held in public and anyone can attend. Uh, yes, yeah, no, that's fine, Chair. Um, the link's only for individuals who want to speak at the meeting. Uh, so the, the lady has made a written representation, but she says she doesn't want to speak. So it's entirely up to you whether you allow Yeah, but I'm, I'm very happy for you to uh, uh, observe and uh, listen in to the uh, proceedings. Good. Okay, um, in that case, uh, we've established who's here. Um, can I confirm that all parties have received a link to the agenda pack? If not, speak now. Yes. I don't think I have. Anna Ginsberg. Uh, uh, Matthew, are you able to send Anna one, please? Um, okay, sure, I'll send it right away to you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Matthew, cheers. Good. Uh, right, good. Can I draw all parties' attention to the 15 minute time limit as set down in the policy? And can I ask those making representations to keep their points um, uh, in their rep to the, what they said in their written representation? And all issues raised should be relevant to the licensing objectives which you have before you and not to repeat anything anyone else has said. I appreciate that's difficult. Uh, but if you could try. Um, we might allocate some additional time if um, if appropriate. Um, we'll see how see how things go. Um, so firstly, we get a presentation from the licensing officer, Chris Devine, who will give an outline summary of the report. So over to you, Chris. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll just share my screen. Uh, right, hopefully you can see that up on your screen, the big, big red screen. Yep. Lovely, right, so this is the application for. Uh, so this is the application made by Greenwich Hospital for the grant of a premises license under the Licensing Act uh, in regards to Cutty Sark Gardens. From their application, um, Greenwich Hospital is a charity organisation providing support to serving uh, to serving and former Royal Navy and Royal Marine personnel, as well as the market that they run on Cutty Sark Gardens. They also run the covered market in Greenwich. This is the area in which licensable activities are proposed to take place. Um, I assume everyone here will be familiar with the with the layout of Cutty Sark Gardens, but uh, the licensable area will be on this uh, left hand side of the gardens, just to the uh, to the west of Cutty Sark. Um, it's notable that the nearest residential properties will be over here, uh, Rockfield House. This is approximately twenty meters away. From the sky, so you've got a bit of um, perspective for the scale. This is what it looks like. So again, you've got the licensable area here on the left-hand side. You have the nearest residential properties here on Rockfield House. You also will have some here on Greenwich Church Street and uh, on King William Walk. Some of the houses here will look over the uh, look over the square, and you'll see that in a moment. 
So from the ground, this is what the licensable area will look like. It's going to take place uh, on this sort of upper concourse area here, um, just above the steps. Um, the stage area, as indicated on the plans, would be situated just by this uh, this grass area here. Um, for orientation, you'll, you'll be aware we're looking north here. You've got Cutty Sark on the right um, and uh, Rockfield House on the left-hand side. Greenwich Town Centre would just be behind us. Turning 92 degrees to our right, you can see the Cutty Sark and you can see some of the houses there on King William Walk. Another 90 degrees to our right, so looking back into Greenwich Town Centre, Cutty Sark on our left and Rockfield House on the right, uh, the river just behind us. And finally, uh, if you're looking at Rockfield House, Cutty Sark is just behind us, the stage area would be just on this right hand side over here. So this is what the applicant is seeking to have authorised. They're seeking live and recorded music, outdoors only, as you'd expect, um, Friday to Sunday from 12 midday until 1600 hours. That's 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And also the same hours on bank holidays. Uh, within their application, they've offered a number of conditions. These are laid out in full in paragraph 2.4 and within the application itself. Uh, very briefly, they are that licensed activities will be ancillary to market activities, so they can't be having solely music concerts here. It has to be ancillary to a market. They've offered various policies and staff training aimed at reducing antisocial behaviour. They'll have a dedicated market manager to oversee the operation of the market, and they've committed to noise levels not exceeding 65 dBA as measured from the nearest noise-sensitive premises, which is likely to be Rockfield House. Again, you can look at paragraph 2.4 for all the conditions and the full wording. In terms of the representations received, we've received four from um, local councillors. They raise concerns that existing music played on the gardens, um, not necessarily associated with this applicant, um, but ish and the issues that this causes to the residents. They note the proximity um, of the pro, pro uh, excuse me, the proposed location to residents in pick in particular to Rockfield House. Again, that's around 20 metres away. Um, they've expressed a lack of confidence that these limits will be enforced, talking about um, existing issues. Um, they talk about existing issues of antisocial behaviour that's been reported to them, in particular public urination, which has been happening in the local area, and uh, a concern that this may be worsened if there are if there is a regular offering of live music that will attract more people to the area. In addition, there have been 14 representations from residents. They raise broadly the same issues as I've described above. In addition to that, they also mentioned the impact of the music um, on young children and adults working <laughs> shift patterns uh, who would be sleeping during the day. Uh, they raise interaction between alcohol consumption and music entertainment and the potential for an increase in antisocial behaviour. It's notable this application doesn't include an alcohol provision. However, there are um, other alcohol licensed premises in the surrounding areas and some markets are occasionally licensed or might apply for a temporary event notice. Uh, there's a report of lack of security at these events. Um, the uh, the representative in that case reports that uh, the security tend to be focused in Greenwich Market and not the market associated with Cutty Sark Gardens. And there are concerns raised as to overcrowding and crowd management. The appendices are available in full in your pack at appendices C and D. So the decision that you need to make, uh, I'll read this verbatim, uh, when considering the application to grant the premises license, members must have due regard to the representations made and take such of the steps as it considers proportionate and reasonable for the promotion of the licensing objectives. It's open to the authority to grant the application together with such conditions as are consistent with the operating schedule, which I've laid out, um, and any conditions must be appropriate for the promotion of those objectives. You may impose additional conditions on the license, again, so long as those are appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives, or you may refuse the application on the grounds that refusal is appropriate to the promotion of the licensing objectives. It's also uh, within your gift to grant only certain requested license activities. So here there are two. So you could, for example, grant only live music or only recorded music or anything in between. 
So again, that's a very whistle-stop tour of uh, what's in the report. Uh, oh, pardon. Uh, if you've got any questions, even now or throughout proceedings, I'm obviously happy to take those or anything that you need clarifying. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Devine. Um, do you have any questions, Councillor Burt McDonald? Uh, not at this stage. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, okay. I don't have any questions either, I think. I've, I've read all the uh, papers. So maybe then we could move to the applicant um, to um, to present their case. Um, and uh, so, Mr. Ghislaine, are you representing the applicant? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. So I'll yeah. give you 15 minutes, if that's all right. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chris, for uh, explanation. Uh, Yes, we submitted the application based on having a uh, small scale uh, music at Azkati Sark, uh, Friday to Sunday. Um, we discussed this with the uh, Tau Santa managers to understand exactly all the complications and uh, the difficulties which faced by the residents and by the uh, complaints received in the past to avoid it and to operate in the safest environment possible, um, which we decided to put the plan in place, uh, contain two uh, artists which can play acoustics or can play uh, low scale musics. Uh, and uh, most of the artists uh, from uh, uh, Greenwich University are students or local artists, uh, which we always uh, 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 call them for Greenwich Market and uh, they entertain or they played under control, etc. We know them closely. Uh, the speakers will be only one speaker and there is no stage. Uh, it's going to be on the floor, on the ground, uh, covered by the gazebo if it is raining, and we can move them to anywhere which can be uh, away from the residents. And uh, and the music will be monitored by the supervisor who is fully full time working at Katisark during the day. The plan we uh, planning to do is uh, between twelve o'clock to four o'clock. It's going to be only four slots. Uh, each slot is no more than 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, 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 for example, start 12 o'clock, play 15 minutes, take a break and come back again after 40 minutes, play another 15 minutes again until four o'clock, could be 3.30 maximum four o'clock. Uh, we have the uh, noise measure, which will be with the supervisor on stage or on, on the locations to to monitor the noise not to exceed 65 decibel. Uh, we have a management uh, in place to monitor the supervisors and to communicate with the artist if they notice that the music is loud or need to be, uh, or the volume needs to be dropped down. And uh, we uh, also have uh, the risk assessment uh, event plan in place and um, uh, the same thing as well for the DJ. The DJ we do the DJ uh, is 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 very small skills as well. Uh, with one speakers will be monitored by one of our managers or our supervisors on site. Uh, uh, the same uh, the same plan applied as well. Where the music will be under control, uh, the, the volume will be monitored, and um, and it's going to be. Again, 15 minute sl uh, slot for four times between 12 o'clock and four o'clock. Um, in, in relation to the necessity of the having uh, entertainment uh, at Kati Sark, uh, this to uh, enhance the area and to make the area vi vibe and to help the traders as well economically. Uh, especially the traders' uh, main request is to support them uh, having some sort of background music or some uh, small-scale music to uh, support them and to increase the footfall in this area. Um, we uh, operated under this control last year um, from 29th of March 
and uh, we as a Greenwich Market, we haven't received any complaints. And even our uh, staff or our management are on site, they have not received any complaints. We are aware that it was another operator uh, operated before our time, uh, which uh, and a company uh, called uh, Event Inspire. Uh, we it, it was not under our control. We don't know exactly uh, what sort of activities that have been made uh, at that time. Uh, we don't know if that was complied to uh, the rules and regulations of Katisa or not, but. Uh, we uh, have uh, we are responsible from the 29th of March, which we have no record of any complaints or any dispute from uh, the residents or from uh, the member of the communities. Um, I covered that. Yeah, this is uh, the main point uh, I have uh, to describe the uh, plan or our uh, uh, event uh, schedule. Thank you, Sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rashid, for that. Um, could I just ask then, um, you say you've been operating since the 29th of March. So have you been playing music since the 29th of March? on one of the other um, extant uh, license, music license applications, or you've just been operating the market stalls since the 29th of March without music? Uh, no, we haven't done, we haven't done any uh, plan uh, music during the 29th of March. Um, it was uh, one uh, artist played, uh, I believe, uh, I think, the first week, I believe, of uh, April, that before the license has been implemented in the area. I see, I see. Okay, um, Councillor Bert McDonald, do you have any questions? No? Okay. Um, could I just ask, I mean, um, some of the uh, representations, Rashid, are saying, that obviously your market supervisor spends most of their time actually in the main Greenwich market. So will they just be popping out or will they be in the Cutty Sark Gardens for the, the four, every four hours on Friday, Saturday, Sunday and bank holidays? No, we do have full-time supervisor uh, at Cutty Sark, which we have two shifts. The first shift starts from 7.30 in the morning up to 12 o'clock or 12.30 and second mm -hmm. shift from 12.30 up to uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, until everything is uh, uh, clear. And we do have uh, managers, which included myself, which uh, uh, managing the whole uh, team. And we have another two uh, managers or officers, which they are visiting uh, Cathy Sark uh, every one hour or every one hour and a half to operate the supervision. Um and what uh, equipment do you have access to or do you intend to purchase to uh, measure the noise levels? We do have a measure uh, at the moment. We do have a device mm. um, and uh, we trained our staff as well how to use it. And uh, we communicate as well with the traders representatives, which we have two traders representative on site. They are monitoring the site and uh, communicating with the uh, traders and with our staff, with our supervisors as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, if there are no further questions, um, then uh, we'll move on to the uh, people that are making, uh, councillors and residents making representations uh, on the application. Um, and uh, first up, I have, so we're going to try and keep this within the 15 minutes. So what I'm going to do is give everyone two minutes, but councillors um, three minutes, uh, if that's all right. Um, so first up, I've, we don't have, um, we still don't have uh, Mr. Roxas Green, Oliver Roxas Green, I don't think. Just looking. I, I, I actually launched the app since 1025, but I was only let into the call just about two minutes ago. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Oliver. Uh, my apologies on behalf of the clerk uh, for that. Um, so you haven't therefore heard 
what the applicant said? Not really. I, I presume that he was talking about the licensing application, which was charted and outlined in the communications that I received anyway. So I have a, a sort of like a, a grasp of, of what it's yeah. all about. But what I'll do, Oliver, is I'll take, um, I'll, I'll come to you later. So if you hang on, I'll come to you later on, uh, because you were, you did indicate you wanted to make a, a verbal um, presentation to the hearing as well. So we'll start with Councillor Oburn Mulligan is first on my list. Um, so, uh, Callum, uh, three minutes, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I mean, I won't, I won't repeat what was in my written submission beyond just flagging. I think the primary concern here is around public nuisance. This uh, amplified and potentially non-amplified noise very close to residents' homes, a particularly acute problem in the summer when people need to open windows for ventilation. Um, and the existing enforcement around buskers is incredibly poorly enforced. And so I would just have to question one or two points that the applicant um, made there. For example, that no complaints have been received since the 29th of March. I personally made two complaints on the 13th of April, um, including directly with staff on the ground, which actually members of the committee would have been would have witnessed as it followed um, some campaigning we've been doing um, in the area. So I would question that. And I would also question the ability. So the current rules are very poorly enforced. There is no permitted amplification from buskers in Cartisart Gardens. Yet every single weekend we see, particularly with good weather, we see amplified buskers. If, though, if the staff are unable to enforce that very simple existing rule, I would question how likely it is that we're going to see effective enforcement with the decibel counter. Notwithstanding that, I think the nuisance caused to residents, even with the 65 decibel limit, will be acute and disproportionate given um, uh, the proximity of this proposed area. Um, I also note the applicant said if there is an issue and a disturbance to residents, that the music can be moved. It can't. This is a license, I'd just like to remind the committee, this is a license for a narrowly permitted area, the furthest point of which within that permitted area is less than 30 metres from the window of residence. So we're talking about amplified music between 20 and 30 metres from residence windows for considerable proportions of Friday through Sunday and any bank holiday. I have regular complaints from residents about existing noise and antisocial behaviour connected with activity in Cartisart Gardens. Uh, most residents are amenable to occasional amplified music events, such as when we have the International, uh, such as when we have the Docklands Festival, the Greenwich and Docklands International Festival, but this would be every single weekend for four to five hours, potentially. Um, and I would be, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that there's been an attempt to engage here, but there is no way that this scheme can be made acceptable that does not continue to cause acute nuisance to residents. This is genuinely one of the largest amounts of complaints I get as a councillor from residents on the Meridian Estate. I feel I'm approaching my three minutes, Chair. Um, I can see you sort of itching to say you're done. Um, I believe <laughs> there's plenty of others um, have, have time to speak. And I, I think the points are captured most clearly in my written submission and I just wanted to address one or two others um, now. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor. Um, any questions to Councillor Byrne Mulligan? No? Okay, well thank you very much um, for your time. Just ask actually on the, because obviously there's an interest to residents, who is responsible on the point about um, activities there which have not been licensed such as unlicensed buskers and so forth um is it the council's noise team that's responsible for that or is it the greenwich hospital because they they're managing the the stalls and the site chair the, the buskers are licensed by the authority so it should be the council in the first place uh, right of okay and on that Thank you. chair the, the point has been raised repeatedly with um, council staff and also with some of the market area managers as well. And um, there's 
real confusion on the rules and in fact you know i had some people from the uh from one of the teams argue with me that actually amplification was permitted um and i only needed to point to the sign directly above where the busker was for them to be able to see that that's yeah. not the case um yeah. I, I just I have acute concerns about the ability of any of this to be properly um, enforced. But even if it were to be properly enforced, as I as I've stated, I still think it would represent a disproportionate nuisance to residents who are the people we are all elected to represent and who the council is there to serve. Thank you, uh, um, Councillor Robert Mulligan. Um, if there are no further questions, then uh, to move through the list. And the next on my list is Anne, Anna Ginsberg. Anna, are you ready yeah. to address us? Thank uh, you. Hi, everyone. So I am a resident leaseholder at 25 Rockfield House. Um, and I am frankly totally shocked by this application. Um, to second what Callum said, this noise measuring device is either not working or doesn't isn't used currently. Um, the noise level is already way too high. I was struggling all yesterday with an in incredibly loud amplified busker. We already endure so much noise as a result of Greenwich Council just not being clear um, with these people. The food market, the merry-go-round, the endless amplified buskers, the marathon, the various day festivals all year long. Um, from Thursday until late, every single weekend, music can be heard loudly in every single room of my home. Many of my neighbours have young children. I'm currently trying for a baby. Um, the plans for this stage are a mere 20 meters from my bedroom, my living room, and the spare room, which would be my child's home. Um, we all have rights, a, a right for peace and quiet in our homes. I sometimes work nights. This is gonna impact everyone's mental health severely. Um, this application would affect, affect every flat in the hall of Rockfield House and many of the residents in Colton, Coltman House too, not just the Riverside residents. Um, I, as I said, this is utterly ridiculous that this is even being considered with all we already endure. Um, and if this license is granted, um, I am prepared to engage everyone on the block through door knocking. Um, and I also wanted to quickly ask what the uh, process for appeal would be um, and just say, if you can't answer it now, I'd love to receive that information from the councillors via email. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Kamal Jit, do you just want to answer Anna's question in terms of the, the, res the objector's right to appeal as opposed to the <coughs> right to appeal? An appeal against a decision is to the local magistrates uh, once the written decision has been sent out and it's got to be done within three weeks. Thank you. I thought that was the case. Lovely. Sorry, could you repeat that? That was a big echo. I couldn't hear. Uh, it, the appeal is to the magistrates court against any aspects of the decision of the subcommittee. So, and you'll get a written notice of what the decision is and then you have three weeks to make the appeal. Um, magistrates. Good to know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. Um, so moving on, oh, sorry, Claire, do you have any questions to Anna? No, thank you. Um, moving on, next on my list is Councillor Magella Anning. Magella, three minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I'd like to ask the committee, if there was an application for amplified music to be played across the road from where you live, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday afternoons, and on public holidays. Would you grant that? This is the equivalent of what you are looking at today. These are residential areas on the cusp of Cutty Sark Gardens. They were there decades and decades before Cutty Sark Gardens was ever built and designed. 
These people are the people that we represent and we need to be building communities, not providing for more commercial enterprises to make a bigger profit. Uh, I would also like, as an experienced radio reporter, to talk about the acoustic areas. I am against uh, the amplifi amplification of music. Uh, in the acoustic environment of Cutty Sark, there is a cement uh, ground area. There is glass on the base of Cutty Sark uh, uh, against which the sound bounces. And on the um, uh, west side of where the uh, performer would be standing, that is the river, which, of course, anyone who knows who lives on the river is an, a source of amplification. So this area is going to provide is going to produce more than 65 dB. There's no doubt about that. I am sure of that. Uh, this is what people, um, elderly, disabled people who cannot leave their homes and they have their windows open for the rare occasions when we have summer, uh, you know, so they can let the fresh air in. This is what they will be listening to. This is their home. And if we as a council have any concerns and any regard for our residents, we should put them first. They must come first. Thank you. Um, so I have a question, uh, Councillor Ranning. How do we balance, um, obviously, Greenwich being a major tourist destination, that being very important for our economy and jobs, uh, but also it's a cultural hub with the Trinity College of Music where people want to practice their music and the university and so forth. How do we balance the need for animation and activity uh, taking over public spaces with obviously the rights of, um, of residents to some peace and quiet. Well, I know Trinity College of Music very well. And I can tell you now that the uh, acts that will be um, performing will not be nice, gentle, classical music. It will be um, uh, um, sometimes rap music, sometimes uh, very rhythmic music, sometimes with loud bass in the music. This is what uh, is uh, traditionally used to uh, get people hanging around the markets, getting them to buy more food, etc. Tourists can enjoy this music and then they can walk by. Residents cannot, and that must be the central element of your consideration. Um, so it, we're not going to have a general discussion now, uh, but Claire, did you have any questions? No? Uh, Callum, you raised your hand. Uh, we're not going to say, is it pertinent to these this point? Because we've really... Yeah, well, it was a specific yeah. question that you asked Councillor Anning. I think I would just have to pose the question of, does anybody really think that there is trouble with people coming to Cutty Sark Gardens? It's a fairly vibrant and busy market space. Um, and I think there are plenty of other places in which people are able to engage in some of those cultural outputs, such as the music. That's what the Naval College itself has. It's what we also have at Trinity Laban. You know, these are there are plenty of opportunities, I think, for people to engage in that culture on a weekly basis. Nobody has objected to the idea of uh, mm. rare, larger events in Cutty Sark Gardens, where it'll just be a single day. But this is about uh, repeated weekly, uh, you know, three days a week um, of this, when I think there are plenty of other venues and spaces in the locale where Thank music you. can be can be engaged. Um, and the gardens are, as we say, they are very vibrant, very busy as it is. Thank you. Um, next on my list, I will, by the way, give Rashid a chance to come back afterwards, <laughs> just in the interest of fairness and everything. Um, we've got uh, Kim Jackson. Kim, I can see you. Can you hear us? Well, I don't think Kim is listening in. Although she's here on the 
Zoom, but not obviously. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Great. Uh, um, Kim, if you could yeah. just uh, give your uh, speak to your written representation for up to two minutes, please. Okay. Great. I don't want to repeat, as you said, what everyone else has said. I've been um, one of the longest standing residents there. Um, I think Anna spoke um, very well on our behalf, um, but I've been there for over 20 years and the monitoring of the busking has never happened. They repeat the same music over and over again. Um, it's invasive. Um, you feel like your privacy is, is being taken away from you. You can't open your windows. Um, the whole thing is not child friendly. I think people want to bring their children to the Kati Sark um, to see the boat. It's an historical cultural place. I think that would absolutely diminish its appeal um, for tourists. Um, they don't want to come to a musical festival every weekend. They want to come and see what Greenwich has to offer, which is not a stage and alcohol. And also my other concern is that there aren't any facilities uh, for public toilets at all. So there will be people urinating, I'm sure. It's not gonna to appeal to families with children. It's going to appeal to young people as your um, councillor said, it won't be classical music. It will be um, music that, that's not family friendly. And um, as I said, as a resident for 23 years, this is very, very distressing. And many of the uh, people in my block have children and work shifts and it's very antisocial, the whole idea. So thank you for listening. Uh, thank you very much, Kim, for the benefit of your experience. Um, are there any questions to Kim? No? So the next person I have on my list is Brian Walker, who's with us. Brian, I'd like to give your two minutes, please. Yeah, I also don't want to uh, repeat what I've already said, but just listening to uh, the points made by Callum and, and Kim, I would echo that it, it just... Um, I go around to lots of different places in, in London to these kind of... Um, spot similar to Cuddy Sark and you, you generally don't hear music and they, they're able to attract a, a lot of people and uh, I'm very concerned about the precedent it would create in the in the town centre uh, that that is the kind of um, environment it just feels increasingly like it's not um, necessary it's uh, all I wanted to say. And you're you resident in 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 the same block no, but I also live in the um, in the centre of Greenwich, not too right. far away. Oh, lovely. Um, so the next, any questions to Brian? No. So the next person on my list is um, Milagros uh, Brady. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. I'm, a, I'm a resident for the past 40 years. Uh, I have been here since 1985, and I have seen the development of the Cathy Sarks, and um, the level of noise has risen so badly. Uh, mental health has been mentioned, but I can tell you that I have panic attacks because the loudness that came through was so great that felt so trapped and hopeless. That was really a horrible experience, not being trapped in your home and not being able to come out to a place of safety because you were surrounded by this loudness around you. And that's what you have to be aware, that things are going to escalate. Nobody's going to be there checking it because I don't expect the supervisor is going to be there all the time. He probably won't be able to stand it. <laughs> and uh, so please, we beg you, find another place. I mean, the Greenwich Hospital is a rich foundation. They have lots of land around and the proper place for music is the park. There is a bandstand, plenty of space. Why did you have to choose outside my window. I'm from number 26, by the way. So it's very close to me. So please find another place. Thank you. 
Thank you, Milagros. Uh, any questions to, um, to Milagros? No? Uh, okay, so that comes back then to Oliver. Um, so Oliver, you have Hi. a chance to collect your thoughts. And, uh... Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. So I, I'm a leaseholder. I reside in six Rockfield House. I'm on the ground floor. Um, I think most people or everybody has already echoed what I have in mind anyways. Um, just wanted to add one more point. Um, sometimes the music can get so loud and I know it's probably better for me because I'm on the ground floor, but the people upstairs are in a worse position because noise travels upwards. But there are times that I would even have to go into this room. This is my, my study, my office, and this is in the front part of the flat, close to the door to make phone calls. Because if I if I do it in my bedroom or my living room, which is facing Katisak Gardens, I wouldn't be able to hear um, the people I'm I'm speaking with on the phone. And then also one other thing is, I was wondering what is the actual value add of providing the music? Because the the the, the market is already happening. I have no problems with that. I have no like what Callum said. I don't have any problems with occasional one-off events, but I don't understand what value does it add to put music every weekend, apart from making it more festive, but to the detriment of us here who's living in the buildings. But that's all. Thank you very much, uh, Oliver. I mean, um, so I ra well, we'll get Rashid a chance to uh, come back, the applicant, and uh, hopefully he can pick up that uh, question of yours. Um, I think that concludes all the public and councillor representations. Um, Anna, you had a point you wanted to make quickly. Sorry, guys. I just had one more point, which was actually, I sometimes think already the amplified sound and the musical amp amplified sound at the food market works against keeping tourists in the space. I see time and time again, people sit down to eat. A busker comes out with their speaker or, you know, the rubbish electronic music is played at the food market and they move on. I do not think it's leading to a better economic situation for the for the people at the stalls anyway. And I don't, yeah, I don't see the purpose of this, of, 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 of the music at yeah. all. I Thank never you. have. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, right, well, we need to be fair and, and make sure everyone's had the same time. Uh, and, and Rashid, a number of points have been made there um in objection to the application uh so it'd be very good to give you an opportunity to uh to come back uh, on those points and uh, reinforce your uh the case for your application thank you thank you Mr. Chair. thank you <laughs> uh thank you for uh all the, for everyone um uh, for the comment and uh, just few points uh, to highlight uh, starting with the uh, buskers um, I, I, we are aware that the buskers sometime uh, get uh, start performing just next to the market uh, just where the public toilet is which uh, we uh, as officers or as a manager sometimes we get involved even we don't have the authorities to do that and we ask them to move from there uh, it will be great to have direct contact with the officers in the council and whenever we see them performing without authorizations, we can contact the council uh, to get involved, the officers to get involved. We're happy to do that. But uh, we we have noticed uh, in several occasions that the buskers just jump sometime everywhere and start playing without authorizations in there, which is we are against that completely. And uh, it's been highlighted to us by our officers in so many occasions. Um, and we happy as well to uh, have direct contact with the residents, to uh, uh, contact us directly, uh, to highlight if they are not happy with the noise level, or if you are not happy with uh, anything which they have concerns, we, we can get involved immediately. We can create a direct line with the residents. Uh, and that will help a lot instead of going through uh, different channels and sometimes we'll receive a complaint, sometimes not. Um, and we're happy to do that. Uh, uh, in relation to uh, the performance, um, uh, with, with due respect to uh, uh, some of the comments, uh, 
highlighted that we will do or we are planning to do performance three days a week, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, every week. That, that This is not our plan. Uh, our plan is to do one performance a week. Could be Friday, could be Saturday, could be Sunday. No more than that. And the performance will be very, very restricted. It's going to be four slots or three slots or 15 minutes uh, and uh, between 12 o'clock and four o'clock. That's it. And that will be monitored under strict rules and regulations, strict supervisions by our managers and by our super, uh, uh, supervi supervisors. Uh, the other thing as well uh, being highlighted is uh, what is the value to to be add to the area um, uh, if we add the music, etc. It, it is make a big difference. Uh, first, we don't forget we are comp competing with other markets as well in the area, in the Docklands and 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 uh, different places. And every market having that as a part of the marketing strategy to to enhance the the, the economy and help and support the traders. And in the meantime, to have uh, the place uh, become vibrant and 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 attractive, um, yes. And uh, the music we we are very uh, selective in our plan for the music that will be allowed to be played in there. We not going through the rock music or the pop art music or anything like that. We try to choose very uh, 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 I would say classic music more to focus on classic music. And to focus on the music, which not create uh, 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 too much disturbance or uh, not welcomed by the residents, um, and mainly by the uh, uh, by uh, the the students or by the local uh, artists, which we are dealing with the most of the time at Greenwich Market. Um, I think that will cover my point. Thank you. And I'm just trying to marry what you said, Rashid, with what's in your application, which is about there's something about DJ background music um, and the applications for four days a week. But you're now saying you'll just use it one day a week. I don't think that was clear in the application. I just wonder whether you're and you're talking about passive. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry to interrupt. Um, those present are now using the chat facility, which is not permitted. Okay, Matthew, could we disable the facility? Thank you. Um, so I, I just wondered um, whether, um, Mr. Ghislaine, uh, you know, whether, whether you could just clarify, because we got to deal with the application that's in front of us. Um, we, we're not dealing with a, a, a smaller, narrower scope application, if yeah. you like. Uh, we've only got your word for it. So yeah. I, I just want... Yeah. Sorry, just to assist you, the application is um, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four hours. So it, how the applicant uses that kind of a, um, a license, if yeah. you were granted, it's up to them. And on the indication is it's just one day a week. It could be any of those three days. Yeah. But I, 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 yes, okay. Um, but you just seem to be changing the goalposts a bit, I thought. Uh, well, we we never we never in the history done uh, three days in a row uh, or four days in a row like last year, for example. We we, we operate the market Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we never done it four days in a row, or we always having one day a week uh, historically, uh, one day a week. So it could be any day, it could be Friday, it could be Saturday, it could be Sunday. So. Um, that that was our that was our practice in the past, and that is my plan at the moment. So we are not having uh, a tense plan or uh, for free day. We, that not our aim. Thank you. Can I just ask um, Councillor Bert McDonald if you have any further questions or points you wanted to make? No, no. Welcome, uh, Councillor Bird. By the way. <laughs> I didn't introduce you because uh, you you came in after the uh, main deliberations. So could I just well, apologise for my lateness, please, Chair? Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I think we've now 
heard uh, the case for the applicant and we've heard the case for uh, the um, respondents or objectors, residents and councillors, and, and we've given opportunity for the applicant to come back on some of the points uh, that have been made. Um, so if there are no um, further points that uh, people want to make at this stage. Uh, oh, um, Mr. Charlton, I think you're with the you're with the applicant, aren't you? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm with the applicant. I'd just like to say that we do have residents within our portfolio very close to the Scuttisark area along Greenwich Church Street and um, those buildings at which overlook Cutty Sark, which was shown in the initial uh, presentation slide. So we are very minded to work around residents um, with regards to this application. That's one point. And so second point is listening to everything that's been said. Um, I think perhaps this could be an opportunity to try and control the busking, get rid of it really by having just a permitted user on, on the site. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, clearly, um, people have raised issues, Mr. Charlton, in relation to the current operation, uh, which I suppose is out with uh, the um, uh, our deliberations on the application, but obviously has informed uh, some views. Uh, but um, whatever the outcome, then clearly there needs to be discussions between yourself, local residents, and indeed the Council Environmental Health team. Uh, in terms of um, ensuring that the current regulations are enforced. And, and now, Anna, I'm going to give you one bite uh, and then I want to Yeah, conclude. cool. Yeah. It was just to voice what everyone was saying in the chat when they weren't allowed to chat, which is just that there isn't there isn't music at um, Borough Market and I don't think there's music at Docklands Market and they're really well attended. Um, and I don't really understand why there's already amplified music at the market in um, County Sarkar. Yeah, the, and there shouldn't be amplified music other than through the bus. There shouldn't be the, the stalls play. The... the stalls play amplified music, David. But yeah, thank you. Yeah. That that clearly is a matter for enforcement. There are some other licences which have been granted in the past, uh, like the Doctors Festival, and and the council can have sixteen days a year. Um, I'm not sure whether that's used or not, but this is a separate. Uh, a separate matter. Okay, um, well, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending. Um, I appreciate we appreciate very much um, the passions run high on this, um, and uh, we will now um, conclude the hearing. And uh, we, the members, will meet in private, uh, where we'll deliberate and uh, look at um, look at all the evidence, and then. Um, and then a full decision notice will be sent out within five working days, both to the applicant and to uh, respondents. And as Kamaljit reminded us uh, after Anna's questions, if you're not happy with the decision, you can appeal against it to the Magistrates Court, which has to be done within 21 days. So thank you very much for your time this morning, and um, we will be in touch shortly. Thank you. Thank you.